Ten years uh, ago, you decided to change your world and become a pastor. That alone is a, <laughs> is a, is a, a huge thing. And you started yeah. a church called Conduit. And, but yeah. I don't think, I, just in the, in the wee while I've been with you and talking with you, I don't think your church is a normal church. I think you've got different <laughs> visions and mindsets. Tell us, yeah. tell us more about Conduit, will you please? Yeah, I mean, <sighs> Conduit is God's sense of humor. Um, because I never meant to start a church. I never meant to be a pastor. I was an artist manager in the music business for you know, almost 20, 20 years combined of agent and management. And I, uh, about five years before that, so about 2005, uh, God just started wrecking my heart. Uh, it was after meeting a guy from uh, Haiti and uh, we started this little Bible study and I, I had some young people joining us. They were all like 20 somethings. I was, I guess, 30, I guess at that point. And, but we just started giving whatever little money we had, we started giving to, um, our, our buddy in Haiti, his name's uh, Gerald LaFleur, still a friend of mine. And I, so that was it. It was a Bible study. We had a MySpace page, which, uh, is hilarious now to think about, but, uh, <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> Yeah, that was the extent of what we did, but it was, and it said, we're, but the reason I bring it up is it says, we're not, a, our little logo was, we're not a church, we just act like one. Um, oh, wow. Because I, I just, Brilliant. Philip, I thought that if I, I thought if it was a church that it would ruin it. Um, that sounds harsh now, but I, I you, you know what I mean? I just thought, like, but we're a Bible study, I have a job, I don't need a check, and and we could just be a conduit of his resources. Wow. Uh, and, and it just, that was literally as much thought as we put into it. But as, as time went on, um, through, through some wise people speaking into my life, I began to realize that, um, because people would say, are you guys a mission organization? Are you a Bible study? Are you a, like, yeah, yeah. All that. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> um, yeah. But the problem is I was defining us by what we weren't, not by what we were. Cause I would just Ooh. say, well, we're not a church. Um, but one, it was almost like the Lord through, again, through wisdom just said, look, I don't know what you know, uh, what you think a church is supposed to be doing, but that's kind of it. Um, Acts 2.42, you know, they were devoted to, to prayer, to teaching, breaking of bread, but fellowship, that word koinonia, you got, you're from the era where every coffee shop was named a koinonia. I was there too. Um, <laughs> but, but, but that word fellowship didn't just mean to just hang out and quote, no. do life together. It was literally like when Paul in Romans, when it says we're bringing our offering for the saints in Jerusalem who are suffering uh, in Second yeah. Corinthians 8 and 9, he talks about it again. He uses the word koinonia for the offering. So your brothers and sisters that are sending you a dollar a day for your uh, these children in, in Romania, they're, they're fellowshipping with them. Yeah. And wow. so that was uh, that was, yeah, two, in uh, 2000 and nine i um I, I signed over my company sold what was what i could and my wife and i did what i think it was probably the dumbest thing i've ever done which is uh start a church in nashville tennessee <laughs> and the That's lord has crap. been so kind um and i say dumb because it just didn't make any sense on paper but, do but it, the lord do has it. been kind but i've learned in my experience god lives in the dumb Everything I've done mm. has been dumb. Everyone, everyone, every time I've done something, someone said, are you, what are you doing? Are, are you, you crazy? Out of your yeah. mind? What on uh -huh. earth? You, that'll never work. Let me tell you something. God lives. Let me tell you how dumb, let me tell you how dumb God is. He gets people to come out of boats in a storm. Uh -huh. He makes guys catch fish and expect gold to be in a fish's mouth. He makes mud spitballs and sticks it in people's eyes. Yes. He tells guys yes. to floor down through the roof, rise, take up your bed and walk. You talk about yeah. dumb. Throw your net on yeah. the other side. But, but we fished yeah. all night and we don't catch, you know you don't catch fish in the day. You only fish at night. That's how it's all. Cast your net on the other side. Yeah, on the other side. And I'm, listen, God just spoke through you just now. There, look, there's someone watching just now and, and you're the point of doing something dumb for God. And everyone's telling you it's dumb. And we're here to tell you, you're not so dumb as you think. Build a boat uh -huh. in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and, and stuff is going to fall out of the sky when it's yeah. never rained before. And make this boat yeah. big enough for all the animals in the world. 
See, you do. You got. You are a kindred spirit with me because I've said that. I've said that phrase before, and and it oftentimes is met with, uh, well, that's not stupid. It's you know, God's not stupid, but but they didn't understand what I'm really saying, which is that no, he's not stupid. He's miraculous. And brilliant. Miraculous. <laughs> He's brilliant. He's and a, the miraculous yeah. is always founded by doing something that wasn't, you know, natural. So that's the truth. St again, starting a church in Nashville felt like that to me. And, oh, great. you know, I remember I, I sat down with my kids, Philip, um, 2008 or nine. No, it would have been 2009 because I was reading to them from the book of Hebrews because I was telling them we have an 85% chance of failing. That's what they say about church plants. 85% yeah. of them will fail. And so I read to them from Hebrews chapter 11 and, and, and the, you know, the, 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 the hall of faith, which is very exciting, right? They're, they're, this one's conquering cities and this one's nations. And, and then there's not even a break in the sentence. And this one was eaten by lions and this one was killed by the sword. <laughs> and, and so I just told them, like, I just don't know which one we're going to be. Like, but either one is okay. Like, we're going to be okay because we're following Jesus. So whether we're conquering a nation or whether we're being, you know, shutting Consumed. down in five years <laughs> yeah either's okay because we're doing it in faith that the, the trust that jesus was there and uh, honestly it was about so four cool. years five years before i realized that we weren't going to fail as a church which was a uh it was a, that was its own moment for me but i i, oh. I thought on uh, well this shows you what my maybe my faith whatever but i thought that we were going to be the ones that would be consumed and i was going to be i was totally okay with that and I, uh, I'll tell you how we knew God gave us a building right in the middle of our little county. Um, one of the most expensive places of real estate in the entire Southeast. And God just literally gave us 11 acres and a building. And I thought, oh, I guess he wants me to do this oh. for a little bit. I guess I'm a pastor. So That is absolutely. Well, I've discovered in my life, whenever we've gone, everything we've done, whether it's Vatra Village, when we started Vatra Village, it was the worst time you could imagine to believe God for anything. I was completely mm. without money. I'm not going to say broke, but I was there. And I thought to mm -hmm. myself, you know, this will never happen. So here we are, millions of dollars later, the place is built. I still don't have wow. any money, but I've been a conduit. I've been the vessel through which the money is flown to make the miracle uh -huh. happen. When you're carrying oil, you don't have to be a smart pipe. You've just got to be a sound pipe. You don't have to have leaks. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're just yeah. carrying, as, as long as you're allowing the flow to go through you, you don't have to be very brilliant or you've just got to be available and have no leaks. The, the, you know, that's a great way of wording it because I, so again, we started 2010 was when we, we basically admitted we're having a church and we're, we're meeting on Sunday mornings. And... <laughs> You but, can in er, but here's the, yeah, but an earthquake happened in Haiti, uh, the, oh, almost yeah. the day that yeah. I signed my company over and we'd been working in Haiti for five years by that point. Yeah. And so I was supposed to be going and raising money for the church. You know, the, the church professional consultant goobs, uh, yeah. will, will tell you, you got to have $150,000. Uh, you got to do postcard mailings. There's a whole system for it. It's like, you know, starting a Taco Bell franchise and, sure. <laughs> but I, I couldn't because we had friends in Haiti that we didn't know whether they were dead or alive. Oh my goodness. And so I immediately, we were, we were moving uh, fast, getting resources into Haiti. It's a long story, but Amazing. when I should have been planting a church, that's what we were doing. But I remember I felt the Lord say to me that if you'll take care of this stuff with that kind of trust, that oh the rest will take care of itself. Oh. And I've so we stumbled thing. out of the gate. Yeah, we stumbled out of the gate. Easter Sunday, 2010. I had no money. I had ninety thousand dollars in the Haiti account. I think we had two thousand in the church account. Um, yeah. We had a soundboard that uh, was embarrassing because uh, I mean, and it's Music City, but I, I'd, I'd been busy. We didn't have anything. We were like, yeah. Uh, but God showed me then that um, you know how it is. What, whatever you win them with is what you got to keep them with. So if I had rolled out of that with a big sound, light, fog machine, video, whatever, I would have had to keep them with that. But because we were in a high school cafeteria with, again, a soundboard that I couldn't even give away. Literally, nobody would take it off of Craigslist when we were done with it. Uh, but the church, the God just was in it and he still grew it. And he showed me that he could do so much through the power of the Holy Spirit, Crazy. not through 
You know, we say it's the uh, your good vibes uh, are not going to break the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the anointing yokes. that breaks the yoke. And, and I wish um, to goodness we, so we, we would all remember that. It's 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 not how yeah. good your program is, guys. It's not how fancy the church is. Is uh, I'd rather have a guy with one string on his banjo anointed than an <laughs> orchestra with no anointing. Yeah. Because it's, the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing.